When we first turn on our computer, we provide a username and password. It might be to log into our local machine. It might be to authenticate to a domain. Throughout the day, we may visit many different websites where we are always providing some type of authentication. It's something that happens all the time. There's a lot of ways to go about authenticating. The most common is to provide a username and a password, and now you gain access to that resource. But there's other ways to get access to that resource that may include other techniques, such as a token generator that you would also include along with your username and password. Some devices have a fingerprint reader where you don't even have to provide a username and password. You slide your finger across the fingerprint reader, and the machine knows that it's you and provides you access, you've now authenticated onto that device. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of things happening. We obviously are not sending in normal text our username and our password across the network. To do that these days is not very smart. People are always able to look at those packets going over the network. So we need ways to make sure that we can still authenticate to a remote device, but not provide anyone with the ability to see our username and our password we need to find some cryptographic way to encrypt or hide this data and then send it across the network. One common way to do this is with something called a cryptographic hash. This is used all the time when working with usernames and passwords. And it's a way to take information and summarize it into a form that cannot be confused for anything else. It's a very complex cryptographic function, and it's a one-way function. So we would put our password into this cryptographic hash function. It outputs a piece of information on the other side, and we use that hash to do our authentication. You call this hash a message digest. It's a summary of the information that it has looked at, and it provides you with this piece of information, this text. And there's a lot of different ways to come up with the hash. Two very common ways. One is called MD5, which stands for Message Digest Algorithm 5. Another more common way these days is one called SHA, or SHA. That stands for Secure Hash Algorithms. The message hash is one where we might provide, for instance, our hash of our password, password 111. And if we put that text of password 111 into the cryptographic hash function, what spits out on the other side is this long string of text for MD5. If we put it into the SHA-256 algorithm, it puts all of this text out. So that looks nothing like password 1. We can't get that information and somehow figure out in a reverse form that that was password 1. There's no way to do that. This is perfect when you're dealing with passwords, because now you don't have to send the password across the network in plain text. You can simply send the password hash. Here's how this works. If we were going to ask a server to authenticate, the first thing the server does is provide us a message back saying, well, you need to provide me with a username and password. And we might get a little box that pops up on our screen. And we would type in our username, and we would type in our password. And we would decide at that point what to do with this. That little box is not going to send our username and password in plain text. It's going to hash our password. So what it really sends back is maybe sends my, my name, my username back in plain text. But it's going to hash the password locally on my computer and only send the hash back to the other side. Now, well before this, I've already set up a username and password on that server. And when I did that originally, the server stored a hash of my password in its database. So now it's received the hash from my login. It's comparing it now to what's in the database, and it's deciding is this matching what I have in my database? If I typed my password in wrong, then the incorrect hash was sent across the network. And I'd get a message back saying, sorry, you do not have access to this resource. If I type my message in properly, then the hash function is going to perform and provide exactly the same hash that it provided originally when I set up that account. By using this hash function, we're able to easily send information across the network, but still maintain the privacy of our usernames and our passwords on the network.